Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and today I want to talk a little bit about a paper that was actually published in June with regards to the amount of lives that were saved by COVID-19 vaccines. The estimation is about 20 million lives. That's huge numbers. Well, the question then becomes, where did they get this from? And what would Africa have to say about it? And that's essentially the starting point for what I'm talking about. Uh, before I go any further, I just want to encourage you that if you haven't joined me on Substack, please click on the link below for more posts, podcasts, and videos all since March 2020. And so this is one of the posts that I have on Substack as well. And so I'm just sharing some of the ideas with you. And it came really from a discussion on LinkedIn today. And it was by the, uh, the CEO, I'll show you here, of Gavi, uh, the Vaccine Alliance. And he was congratulating uh, Tanzania on a 10.8 fold increase in COVID-19 vaccine coverage. And you can see the image here a little bit better. Uh, you can see at the beginning of the year, they were at 3%. Uh, and then by about July, they were still only at about 7%. And then with the major nationwide campaign, they jumped to 28%. And that is excellent in terms of what they have managed to achieve in actually getting people vaccinated. Because at the end of the day, vaccination is still of importance in many diseases. But let's just think about something a moment. Tanzania similar to many parts of Africa. In January 2022, this is like a year after we started the COVID-19 vaccination program, was only at 3%. Let's just imagine that the virus was as lethal as it was thought, and that vaccines were probably the only way that lives could be saved. What would have happened to Africa? They had no major health infrastructure that could have coped with intensive care. They would have struggled in terms of hospitals with vast numbers of people coming into hospital needing oxygen. It would have been a disaster. And so in a sense, what we have had here is a lucky escape because we didn't deliver on Africa in the way that we probably could or should have but it was a lucky break for Africa because it raises an important point that I had highlighted before. When we look at where the pandemic is, and this was taken from the John Hopkins site, and I spoke about this recently, you can see that here in this image, the only place that doesn't seem to be affected by the COVID-19 Omicron spread is Africa. It's spread all over Europe, into Asia, North, Central, and South America. So how in the world did that happen? Africa and Tanzania, if we use it as an example, only had 3% vaccination up until January, 7% up until July. Yet Africa is not affected really by the Omicron pandemic. How is that explained? And even more importantly, let's take this a little bit further. And um, what I'll do first is I'll take the paper and show you what it is that they have been saying. So here in the paper, this was a, a, a summary of it, global impact of the first year of COVID-19 vaccination, a mathematical modeling study. So this is the important thing. They are not talking about what happened. They are saying what they predicted could have happened with regards to COVID vaccination. So they used this mathematical model and they looked at all cause excess mortality in 185 countries. And essentially they found that based on official COVID-19 deaths, they estimated initially that vaccinations prevented 14.4 million deaths. And when they used another estimate, it rose to 19.8 million deaths averted when we use excess deaths as an estimate of the true extent of the pandemic. So this is where they got it from. And 
again, the question is, what would Africa have to say about that? Because Africa didn't get any significant number of vaccines, yet they didn't seem to have the deaths that one would have expected. Now, here's an important thing. I have listened for two and a half years that the statistics coming out of, accurate, out of Africa are not accurate. You know, we don't know the full death toll. Let me tell you something that's very important. Just think about this. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. If you have a loved one who cannot breathe, it's almost like an asthma attack. They can't breathe. You are going to take them to the nearest hospital. I do not accept that millions of people in Africa have died because there was no access to hospitals. Even if they did, we would have heard the news two and a half years down the line. There was a very interesting interview with Dr. John Campbell and someone from Uganda. Well worth a listen, because what it has demonstrated is that for some reason, they have not been significantly affected by the pandemic. And the question would then be asked, why would you now vaccinate them? where technically in Africa, the pandemic is over. Pandemic is not over for the rest of the world, but it is over for Africa. And we need to ask some serious questions about that. And instead of now heading to Africa to say, you know what, we missed the boat, let's fix this, let's now vaccinate you. That does not seem to be very scientific. We should be instead going to Africa and asking, what is it that happened that caused your death rate to be so low compared to the rest of the world? Let's get into the numbers because I think, again, this is important to see. So this is taken from Statista, and they are looking at the number of coronavirus deaths worldwide as of September 12, 2022 by country. Number one is the USA, over one million. Number two is Brazil, then India, then Russia, then Mexico. Where is the first African country in this list? As we roll down, where are they? Somewhere, here we go. South Africa had 102,000 deaths. Now, South Africa is, uh, in my view, quite westernized. And so they have a western um, a, a pattern of disease compared to the rest of Africa. So what happened in the rest of Africa? So if we look in more detail and we start to roll down all of these countries here, the first one that I'm coming across here is Kenya, 5,000 deaths. It's equivalent to Finland. It's a little bit less than Finland. And to put it into context here, the population of Finland is about 5 million people and the population of Kenya is 53 million people. So similar amount of deaths with COVID-19, almost 10 times the population. What does that mean? If you keep on going down from Statista and we go all the way down here, what I found really interesting is when we hit somewhere like a, a small country like Barbados uh, has a population probably less uh, than a million. When you look at a country around this, I think I had found Niger. Niger had 312 deaths related to COVID-19. The population of Niger is 24 million. When we look at Burundi, they had probably 100 deaths and their population is 11 million. Something is not adding up here. And rather than heading across to Africa and trying to vaccinate them, we should be asking what is the science in how they managed to not have the impact that the rest of the world did? How is that possible? It's not about sunlight because Brazil is number two in the world and they're about the same way place on the equator. So what is it about Africa that allowed them, even without Western support, to evade the worst of the pandemic? Even in the context of long COVID, is it a problem in Africa? To be frank, Africans will ask, what is long COVID? And this is the important point that we need to try and understand. Let's try and get a grip as to what the science is around COVID-19. 
The lesson that I have learned clinically and from a scientific observation point of view is you do not ignore outliers. If you do, you will not get to the true answers that are required in order to make a difference. So at this point, again, I raise the question. COVID-19 vaccines has apparently saved 20 million lives across the world. What would the Africans have to say about that? And let us remember that at the end of the day, Africa managed to get these outcomes without our help. Let's not mess it up for them. Let's just utilize the science and try and understand it better. Have a great evening.